In this video, we will discuss some black inventors that we were never taught in school. It's okay though. Now it's time we tell our own stories and write our own history. Alexander Miles was a black inventor who invented elevator doors that could automatically open and close. His invention made riding an elevator safer with automatic doors still being a standard feature on modern day elevators. Miles did not invent the device that bears his name. John W. Meeker was awarded US patent for the invention of the first automatic elevator door system. Alexander Miles did not invent this device until 1878. While riding in an elevator with his young daughter, Alexander Miles noticed the dangers of an elevator shaft door that was left open. This led him to draft a design for an automatic elevator door and apply for a patent. Miles attached a flexible belt to the elevator cage, and when it came into contact with drums positioned along an elevator shaft just above and below floors, it allowed doors to open and close at appropriate times. The influence of his patent for an automatic opening and closing device for elevator doors is still seen today in modern designs, since it's a standard feature. Paul E. Williams invented the helicopter, which is much easier to fly than an airplane. When he was a child, Paul's foster mother stressed the importance of education above all else while raising him and his brother in separate houses. He obtained his architectural license and became the first black member of the American Institute of Architects. On November 26, 1962, he created the first useful helicopter, XH-51, which he patented later that year. The first practical helicopter allowed people to avoid flying at excessive heights. John Stannard was a patent-holding inventor who made improvements to the refrigerator and the oil burner. Stannard revolutionized the modern kitchen. His two patent applications still exist and contain thorough drawings of the patented innovations. The invention was issued on June 14, 1891. The application described the device as better than previous ones because of its simplicity, low cost, and ease of repair. Stannard built a separate ice chamber at the back of his refrigerator that was manually filled with ice. The primary refrigerator was in the right-hand side, while the ice chamber was in the left bottom corner. Other inventors later praised Stannard's creation for its novelty and usefulness. One of Stannard's refrigerator's innovative features was its front-mounted faucet that provided access to cold, clean water. In the early 1890s, two inventive minds were at the forefront of typewriter invention, Lee Burridge and Newman Martian. They created two adding machines. The goal of the innovation was to create a device that prints and adds figures when a stylus is used. This goal was met by adapting an existing idea, type letters on paper. The next time you see a mower, give credit to John Burr. He was born in 1848. He may have been a slave until the age of 17, and his parents were slaves who were later set free. Burr worked during his teenage years as a field worker, servicing farm machinery and other machines. Wealthy black activists noticed his brilliance and helped him enroll in engineering courses at a private institution. He moved to Chicago and became an apprentice in steelwork. He submitted his rotary blade mower patent application in 1898. Burr had a long and satisfying life. He delighted in lecturing and tutoring, as well as working with young inventors. Charles B. Brooks is most remembered for his improvements to the street sweeper. The US patent for Brooks' invention was granted on March 17, 1896. He added a self-propelled front brush sweeper to his original design and enhanced it even further by creating safer streets and cleaner sidewalks for pedestrians to walk on. The invention of a receiving pan, which gathered the swept dirt and moved it along a belt to empty into a container, was one of the most remarkable advancements. The front brushes were also modified in this invention, making them varied lengths, and a scraper for ice and snow was included. The popularity of the sweeper was boosted by the financial backing of George H. Halstead and Plummer S. Page. The cost of producing each sweeper was projected to be around $2,000 per unit. The new manufacturing business was given a $100,000 charter from the Pennsylvania state government in February of 1896 and was then given an assessment 
by Buffalo, New York City's maintenance supervisor, who hinted that he might adopt the concept for his own city. T.J. Marshall improved on the fire extinguisher in 1872 when he created a method for pumping water into individual sprinkler heads inside of buildings via pipes. The Marshall fire extinguishing sprinkler system, first used in 1874, is one of the most widely used fire protection systems in American buildings. It was frequently employed in factories because it was an efficient way to put out large fires and potentially dangerous explosions. In the United States, structures taller than 75 feet must now have sprinkler systems installed in order to comply with the law. Sprinklers are often praised for their minimal water damage to the property they affect. These systems are significantly more successful in salvaging property than fire hoses are. Some systems use heat sensors to choose which sprinklers to turn on, delivering water much more precisely and causing overall less water damage. The majority of systems discharge water from nozzles installed in the ceiling of buildings, while some also emit flame retardant foam. James S. Adams invented aeroplane propelling. When the Wright brothers invented the airplane, a frenzy of adventurers, amateurs, engineers, and innovators focused their minds on methods to improve its speed, durability, and altitude. In 1920, J.A.D. Adams approved the use of aircraft propulsion systems. This gave the blades a chance to rotate perpendicular to the airflow, which lessened any potential drag in case of an engine failure. Twin and other multiple engine aircraft use propellers with a second propeller that rotates counterclockwise. This propeller's rotation counters the torque impact of high power pistons and boosts power without expanding the diameter of the propeller. There are little or no resources to the use of Adams propellers, but one thing is certain, it paved the way for more advanced inventions in the aviation sector. If you're enjoying this video so far, then like this video and subscribe to the channel for more information. We drop a high level documentary every Sunday. Now let's get back to the content. Charles Drew, a physician of African descent, was recognized for his expertise in blood plasma preservation during World War II. His study on how to safely ship and store blood plasma continues to save lives today. While studying at Columbia University, Drew began studying blood transfusions. Banked blood was the title of Drew's dissertation. Drew was a pioneer in the field of blood banking. Soon after, he was appointed medical director for Plasma for Britain, where he quickly set new standards for the field. In 1941, he became the American Red Cross Blood Bank's first director in New York. He became the first African-American surgeon to hold the position of examiner on the American Board of Surgery. In 1944, he was appointed chief of staff at Freedmen's Hospital, following his appointment as fellow of the International College of Surgeons. In 1949, Dr. Drew became professor and head of surgery at Howard Medical School. Valerie Thomas invented technology for 3D movies and television. Valerie Thomas started her career at NASA in 1964, where she directed the creation of Landsat, the first satellite to ever relay photographs from space. She also managed a project for NASA's image processing systems. In 1977, Thomas began investigating and testing a illusion transmitter, which would essentially produce the appearance of a 3D image. She obtained a patent for it in 1980. NASA still uses her idea today, as well as for medical purposes, including surgery and making television screens. It's time to change the narrative and write our own history. Click the video on the screen to learn more information they never taught us in school. We'll see you there.